hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of avg news my name is olisi the son of nube and i'm here just to update on a recent court case involving the minister of home affairs uh, that is dr aaron motualeti and his director general Liwani makote uh, who were forced uh, to pay that is from their own pockets some of the legal costs uh, incurred by the ngo lawyers for human rights for what the court termed to be an appalling conduct in a case concerning the rights of undocumented immigrants in south africa so the minister was uh, ordered to pay 10 percent and makote to pay 25 percent for their culpability uh, in what the court uh, termed as a shambles the court also uh, instructed the the minister and the director general's legal representative that is former legal representative advocate mike pofilatos not to claim any fees uh, regarding the case after he made two inexplicable expert that is without uh, the other side present applications uh, one was made to the high court and another one to the constitutional court where he sought an extension of a previous court ruling which declared sections of the immigration act to be unconstitutional and giving parliament 24 months uh, to rectify the legislation the constitutional court ruled that any person arrested on charges of being illegally in south africa must be brought before a court within a certain time frame for an inquiry into whether the detention was in the interest of justice but that ruling lapsed and six years later there was still no remedial action so it is a ruling that was made six years ago and the minister didn't do as ordered by the court that is to make sure that parliament sits uh, and makes this determination of how long uh, someone who is illegal in south africa must take before they are brought to court this resulted in certain magistrates refusing to hold the inquiries meaning that some detainees uh, were just being released when they should have been deported while others were being detained for months that is extra judicial detentions because there was no inquiry held uh, to determine whether their arrest was in the interest of justice or not so the minister and the director general uh, without notice to the lawyers for human rights sought an extension of the constitutional court ruling which they lost judge stephen machete said the court had now stated in five judgments that it did not have the power to extend a deadline of suspension after the deadline had expired uh, he said that the applicants had, had inexplicably vigorously opposed the lhrs application to intervene castigating it for pointing out the four previous decisions saying they felt affronted by this and asking the state attorney to investigate the conduct of the lhr deponent uh, to the affidavit uh, so the judge said all this amounted to extraordinarily lax and arguably even foolhardy litigating he added that the director general uh, in his fipro affidavit had attempted to blame the inordinate delay in the enactment of the remedial legislation on the covid pandemic and the fire at parliament but the court said this had occurred long after the 24 month deadline had passed uh, the other grim excuse that was was that uh, members of parliament were focused on the national elections in 2019 an acknowledgement on the face of it that campaigning for re-election was far more important to members of parliament than the meeting than meeting the deadline for the enactment of remedial legislation that's what the court found so the court added that until the minister and the director general were called upon by the court to state why they should not be ordered to pay costs out of their own pockets there had been no not the remotest hint of an apology for the deplorable state of affairs and neglect of the two's constitutional duty in his affidavit opposing a personal cost order the minister made troubling allegations that is according to the judge uh, who says that the minister claimed to have no knowledge whatsoever of the application when he became aware of it he was very angry he was astounded that it had been brought 
Experte, he said the steps taken to effect the legislative amendments had not been fully explained. He apologized for the mess and said he had fired his legal team. The director general also uh, apologized and said he had not properly applied his mind. They asked that they be given permission to withdraw the application. However, the lawyers for human rights argued that the excuses were untenable and the application should not be withdrawn. Instead, the court must intervene and remedy the constitutional defects. So that is the case where the minister is lost uh, again concerning uh, his conduct in the courts or after he has lost a court case. The judge said uh, the applicants had ignored an order of the court for six years and further delay would be seriously detrimental to the interests of justice and highly prejudicial to those affected, that is the migrants. So the court ordered that parliament enact uh, the remedial legislation within the next 12 months. The court made similar orders as it did in 2017 regarding the detention of those accused of being in South Africa illegally, including court oversight into the extent uh, of the determination. So some might be asking themselves, why then do we include the ZEP and the ZEP holders in this? Uh, you will know that there is an ongoing uh, court saga involving the cancellation of the Zimbabwean exemption permit uh, after uh, the minister, same minister, Dr. Aaron Mutsualeti, uh, announced that he was cancelling the ZEP or discontinuing the special permits that were first given to Zimbabweans in 2010, uh, renewed in 2014, and again in 2017, and the, the last one having expired uh, in December 2021, that is 31 December 2021. So the minister was taken to court by the Helen Sussman Foundation, uh, which then uh, won a court case uh, where the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria ruled that the minister's decision to cancel the ZEP without consultation with those who hold the Zimbabwe exemption permit and the stakeholders in this case was uh, unconstitutional and un 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 unlawful and therefore invalid. But the minister, that was the, the ruling that was made in June 2023, and the, ex the Zimbabwe exemption permit was therefore by the court uh, extended to June 2024, that is the 30th of June next year. But the minister then uh, went without uh, first uh, implementing what the court had ordered. He went back to the same court to appeal the initial ruling. He lost the case and now he's threatening to go to the Supreme Court uh, of Appeal with the same uh, with the same appeal, uh, but in a different court. So he's seeking to have uh, the ruling of attend. He, he sought leave to appeal the judgment but lost it. So now he's going to the Supreme Court of Appeal to try and have the ruling uh, of attend because he's arguing that it interferes with the separation of powers between the judiciary and the executive. Uh, now we don't know what is going to happen, but this uh, new case then shows that the minister uh, might also lose the ZEP case because as he has lost twice, it's likely that he's going to lose again. But now he's forced to implement some court uh, orders. That is, you will remember that the ZEP, as I've said, was uh, extended to 2024 by the courts. That is to June 2024 by the courts. The minister now has to implement that as the Helen Sussman Foundation has also gone to court to try and force him to implement that pending uh, whatever court cases is going to pursue. So this is where the ZEP is coming in. It's highly likely that the minister might be forced by this recent ruling to abide by court rulings while he's exploring other avenues or else he might find himself having to once again fork the legal cost from his own pocket. So we hope that this is going to help speed uh, the proceedings in as far as declaring June 30, 2024 uh, as the deadline on which the ZEP is going to expire. We know that the minister has already 
clandestinely or secretly uh, informed certain institutions that the ZEP is expiring in June 2024. But this disadvantages the ZEP holders themselves unless and until they have been informed officially that their permits have been extended to 2024 because it uh, blocks some of their planning it affects their planning it affects their travel their, their, their traveling back to zimbabwe it affects their processes of applying for new permits because they're in a quandary as to what is going to happen because you'll know that this is also supposed to be some consultation with them some consultation as well with uh some stakeholders who are involved in this so this is what we had for you uh, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and share it thank you